The product rule is not the only rule that we have to keep in mind when we're working with derivatives. Let's see, what do we have? Linearity, product rule, oh wait, I seem to recall something really important, something that is still important, something that we learned back in chapter eight, namely that d squared is zero. If you take a form field, you take its derivative, then you take its derivative again, you get zero. This works not just with one forms and two forms and zero forms, but with all forms. Now this is specifically about this exterior derivative. It's not saying that second partial derivatives of the functions involved in form fields all vanish. No, no, it's a little different. What this does is it generalizes all of the previous three-dimensional results, things like the curl of a gradient is zero, or the divergence of a curl is zero, things like that. Now we have this for arbitrary form fields in arbitrary dimensions. Now, is that complex? Is it obvious? Is it deep? What's really going on here? Well, let's think. There are a couple of ways that one can think about this really surprisingly deep result. Let's drop back to the simplest possible case. Let's assume that F is a zero form field, and we're just gonna look at two of the variables that it might depend on. Let's say Xi and Xj. Now, if we think about d squared in terms of the algebra of the differentiation operator, then let's see what happens. What is d squared f? Well, it's d of df, the gradient one form. What is that? That's partial f partial xi dxi plus partial f partial xj dxj. Now, what happens when we differentiate that? Well, I have to differentiate those two partial derivative functions in front of those two one form terms. Now, when I do that, let's say with the first one, with partial f partial xi, what do I get? Well, I get the second partial derivative in f with respect to xj and then xi times dxj wedge dxi. The other term involving the partial with respect to xi vanishes because dxi wedge dxi is zero. Okay, that's the first term. For the second term, we do the same thing, but we get a slightly different result in that we get the second partial in f, partial xi, partial xj, dxi wedge dxj. So that when we factor out the dxi wedge dxj, what happens is we get the second partial in f, partial xi, partial xj, minus the second partial in f, partial xj, partial xi. And we see that this is zero precisely because of two reasons, the fact that mixed partials commute and the fact that the wedge product is anti-symmetric. Okay, that's an algebraic explanation for why d squared equals zero, assuming that you apply induction and get this for higher forms. But is there another way to think about it? Well, let's think in terms of the geometry of this operator. Let's think maybe in terms of orientations. Here's an idea. If you think about dxi, it has an implicit orientation built into it. One forms measure oriented projected length. But what happens when we apply the differentiation operator twice is that when you try to make sense of orientations, things cancel. Think about it. Take dxi and then dxj and assign an orientation to the associated two form using, say, a right hand rule. Now do the same thing with dxj, then dxi. And what you get is the opposite orientation. When you try to put those two together, it's as if the orientations cancel. Now that is not terribly correct. That's not really precise. The algebraic explanation is clearly better and more mathematically correct. But as with all deep ideas in mathematics, there are multiple ways to think about it. And I encourage you to think about the exterior derivative. The important thing to remember is that d squared is zero.